Last year was our first year gardening, and we really just threw ourselves at it with no game plan. Although we learned a lot, the weeds took over, and it created a lot of stress for us. This year, we are on a mission to make our garden a relaxing and enjoyable place by upgrading the way we garden and the way we start our crops. This year, we've made some upgrades to our seed starting area. We've upgraded for a bigger wire rack here so we can set all of our trays and everything on them. And then we also got these very, very inexpensive LED grow lights, and they're like the exact length of this little grow rack here. We bought these on Amazon, so if you wanna buy the exact same thing, we'll have a link below to our Amazon storefront where you can check those out. We started the garden season off by growing starts in the house. We planted some onions, celery, and we even planted some flowers for our wedding in June. Ashlyn takes her time and makes sure the seeds are done right, so I usually let her handle the starts. For our gardening this year, we've already started some seeds. We've started some different kinds of onions, some peppermints, spearmint. We've also started some sweet pepper. Ashlyn has started some flowers for our wedding. We've got a few other things in there as well, but the biggest thing is our comfrey. That's been growing like crazy. So today we are going to be planting sage and thyme. We've got our new trays from Bootstrap Farmer. They are all different colors. I'm a very visual person and it helps me kind of organize everything. I know certain colors are for certain herbs. Honestly, our new trays have me really excited to get more involved in the garden this year. Last year I worked a lot and so it was kind of like left to Zach, but this year we have our new trays, we have all of our new equipment and I'm really excited to get started on it. This seed starting soil we are using is a mixture of peat moss, perlite, and vermiculite. We fill all of our six cell trays with soil then we water the soil. This kind of soil doesn't absorb the water very well so Ashlyn missed some water on top. And the most tedious part is planting the seeds. So far we planted a ton of seeds and we still have a lot more to go. These trays have made our life so much easier. They are way stronger, so much more durable than any seed tray you could get at the big box stores. They also have extremely tall lids. This allows more growth for our plants and it also gives a way better greenhouse effect. They come with six cell seed trays which honestly we use the most of. And we also got these little pots. We're mostly gonna be using those for tomatoes. The best part about these seed trays is they are a family owned company and they are made in the USA. If you would like to get a seed starting kit similar to ours, click the link in the description to Bootstrap Farmer. This year, now that I'm more involved with the garden, I have gotten us a little garden planner. My brain doesn't work the way Zach's does. He can kind of keep track of everything in his head. I'm much more of a visual person. It helps me so much to have everything written down. Like this weekend we had thyme and sage and then next weekend we have tomatoes and more flowers. If I didn't have this planner, I honestly wouldn't enjoy gardening as much. I like to be very organized. It helps me feel a lot less stressed um, and then I can actually just enjoy it. So if you're really feeling overwhelmed and feel unorganized, I definitely recommend a planner. It's helped us a ton. This coming up weekend, it is gonna be potato planting weekend and our potatoes have been seeding for quite a few weeks now. This is one thing we didn't do very well last year. We didn't let them sit out for too long. So we didn't have a very good potato crop. I'm not too sure if that's why. We did get a lot of bug issues, but one thing we didn't do last year as well is we didn't cut our potatoes and let them scab over. This year we are doing that and we got a lot of potatoes that we are cutting, letting them scab over, and we're gonna plant them next weekend.
because last year's potato harvest was pretty poor, we decided to go ahead and get a bunch of seed potatoes. These are just potatoes we bought at the grocery store and they're organic potatoes that we left out to uh, grow their little eyes. And of course now we've cut them up. But so we've got, we've got russet potatoes, we've got golden potatoes or yellow potatoes. And then we've got our red potatoes down here at the bottom. And our red potatoes seemed like they grew their eyes a lot better than the other two. The russets did the worst and then the gold and then the reds. If you're wondering why we cut these, supposedly they're supposed to scab. And like I said, we didn't do this last year and I, we didn't have a good harvest, but I'm not sure if that really played a role in it. So we're gonna try it this year and do it by the book, but I'm not too sure if this is necessarily needed because they say if you don't scab them, then the potatoes are gonna rot, but last year ours didn't rot. So we'll see if this plays an effect on our crop. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Kentucky and you know what that means? We are going to start getting our garden ready for spring. Our garden's looking pretty rough. We haven't even looked at this garden since last year and we grew quite a bit of stuff, but one thing that we didn't do too well was the weed control. We didn't put any mulch down, we didn't cover the ground, which was a big mistake for us. And this year we're gonna definitely make sure we go ahead and do that. So this year we're probably gonna try out some different methods. One big thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down some landscape fabric and we're gonna garden through the landscape fabric. And then for our like our potatoes and things like that, they're a little harder to do in a landscape fabric type environment. We're gonna probably mulch with hay and if we can get our hands on some wood chips. be using this landscape fabric and we're pretty excited to use it because obviously it keeps all the weeds out but we're gonna have to roll this stuff out and then spread it onto the the area we just tilled so let's go ahead and get to it to cut this stuff of course we could use like a razor knife but I've heard that it frays so we're gonna end up using a torch <sighs> And to tack this stuff into place, we're gonna use some landscape pins. It's basically these little metal things, we're just gonna hammer them in. Hopefully this holds it down pretty good. It's kind of windy today. It seems like those stakes hold it in pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and put another row in. landscape fabric in and that gets us pretty far and the thing I like about this landscape fabric is it has lines in it so that way when we go and we can burn our little holes in there for all our plants we're gonna have nice straight lines or at least somewhat straight this landscape fabric isn't perfectly straight but we're really excited to use this this year because weeds was such a big problem last year and I think it affected our crop. It affected our motivation to work in the garden. So we've already got three rows in in the garden. We have another three rows to go. And one thing we noticed on this last section here is that if you till this and you put the landscape fabric down on top, it doesn't hold very well. Those staples don't go in very easily or they don't hold very well. So what we decided to do was to till this up a few days ago and we have let it sit. It's been raining and so it's been able to settle a little bit. But even just like this, the staples aren't gonna hold very well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive the tractor wheels down whatever row and where those joints are gonna be sitting for the landscape fabric. So that way we can nail those in and they'll hold a little bit better. The 
The system we've got is we're gonna go ahead and staple one side all the way down and then we'll staple the other side and then we'll burn it at the end. We've got 600 feet of landscape fabric in here and we actually have two different kinds of landscape fabric. If you can't tell, the really, really black stuff with the yellow lines is a DeWitt, which is double the price of the Vivor. But we're really curious to see if this stuff is gonna last a lot longer because, you know, if this stuff lasts five years, but this only lasts two, you're better off spending the money on the DeWitt. So it's a lot thicker and honestly, it's a little easier to work with. So we'll have to see as the years go on how this stuff holds up, but, uh, we're pretty happy with it. And next weekend, we're gonna be planting potatoes and onion sets. Over here in our garden, we have these really, really sad gates. They don't look very nice. They don't work well. The latch doesn't even latch. And we need to build some new ones for this year's garden because we're investing all this time in the garden. We wanna make it look nice. So we need to build a little four foot gate here. And way over in the corner there, we need to build two gates, so a double gate, so that way we can fit the tractor through. Ooh. 